and you can go just about anywhere in the country and the world and they've heard of champions. It's a club for players, for people that want to try to get better at the game. It's known everywhere that if you're in champions, you're a good player. One of the great golf clubs in the world. When you talk to people about golf and you're traveling and they ask you where you play and you say champions, they expect you to play well. That's champions. I think our name's pretty well out there uh, overseas and uh, in the various cities. But you do that with competition. You're surrounded by good play and, and you feed off of that. It's an exciting energy that you get from everyone that's here because if they're not taking a lesson, they're giving one and we're all helping one another. Guys that play at that level will help you with your game. And of course, I'll do the same if I can. Playing with more experienced, older players has definitely helped my game. Watching how they get around the golf course, how they manage their game, uh, short game especially. You see these guys that are twice my age plus getting up and down out of nowhere, uh, making long putts and saying, man, I, what do I need to do to get to that level? He wants to play with somebody that he can learn from. We have that here. And we have a lot of people who can really play. Of course, then you go to the tee box and everybody helps you uh, reach in your pocket and pay up. So you just drop your arms down and just let those hips swing those arms. Golf isn't something that you learn overnight. The best players in the world continue to take lessons. It's hard to be good at this game. Competition, I think, is what attracts people to champions. If you want to improve your game, you can come out to champions and do that. We've got more single-digit handicapped golfers than any other club. Champions has like 300 players with a single-digit handicap. That's strong. We make it a restriction that you've got to be a certain handicap to get in the club. Jack started that. He said, I don't care about the money. I want to know that you've put in time and you love the game and you want to protect it and cherish it like we all do. Most other clubs, all you have to be able to do is write a check. This club, you've got to be able to have an appreciation for the game of golf, appreciation for the rules of the game of golf, um, and some level of skill in playing the game of golf. So that's, that's very, very unique. Champions is different because it's only a golf club. All you're going to see out here is golf. We don't have tennis courts. We don't have a bingo night. We're golf. And when you join the club, you know that. You take it seriously and you work on your game. I think the golf club definitely brings out the, the purest golfer, the people that want to play and want to get better. It's the purest that want to learn how to work the ball and hit different shots and, and be the best player that they can be. If you can beat our membership, we've got a pretty, pretty good chance of doing well in competition. You've got a real good chance of doing well. And of course, you've always got Mr. Burke out there helping you with your game too. Nobody will help you with your putting better than he will. A putting stroke is nothing but top spinning a ball with a stick called a putter. And you can do it with a dinner knife. You don't hit it. If you hit it, the ball skids and it goes offline pretty quickly. But if you top spin a ball, it'll usually stay on the line. My dad built River Oaks Country Club. There was no such thing as a golf teacher. There were club makers. They got heads from Scotland and put the hickory shafts in. And then they would go out and show you how to use them. So he got to doing more of that than he did fixing the club. So he hired Demerit to put the clubs together and he was doing all the teaching at River Oaks. I was teaching at Wingfoot and then uh, I got a job at the Metropolis Club and I'd play in the winter time with the other club pros because they closed the clubs up north. I played uh, 18 events a year for 10 years. 
and I went to cities all over this country. I just thought there was enough people down in this part of the country and it would be a first if we built this, the kind of club that Oakmont is or the kind of club that Wingfoot is, and we knew that backwards. And uh, I just thought it would work down here. I can remember uh, when Champions opened, my father was at the opening and uh, came home with stories about how much fun it was to watch uh, Mr. Burke and Demerit and Bing Crosby and Bob Hope uh, playing a round of golf. The opening day was designed by Jack Valenti and we had a big crowd out here because we had Bing, we had Phil Harris, Mickey Rooney, we had a lot of Hollywood guys. They came down to watch us open this golf course, probably to see us get our butts handed to us, but we didn't. I think you need to build them and keep them maintained for the membership. Before we even opened the club, we had 500 members. If we can satisfy those 500, we're doing what we set out to do. And so I was just interested in them. I'm still interested in them. As a tournament venue, Champions is one of the best in the southern United States. When you enter the property, you just have a feel that of just golf and pure golf. And and I think the the best players in the world that, that play at tournament venues have a real appreciation for that. It stood the test of time. You know, some of the best players in the world over decades have played here and it's held up against those best players in the world. Champions really brought a lot of recognition to Houston and the golf world. Holding the U.S. Open, the Ryder Cup, the Champions International, some other big events. We got the Ryder Cup here because both of us have been on it. I've been on five of them and Demerit has been on a bunch of them. And so we knew all of the people involved with the PGA. We explained to them that we need the promotion of the game in the state of Texas and that the Ryder Cup would help that. And so we knew how to run it. We got Ben Hogan as the captain, that helped. And uh, we, we got good crowds out here for it. Then the Champions Cup matches, which has become a premier two-man amateur event uh, in the country. Jimmy and I both were on the circuit, so we'd run into guys all over the country and we'd invite them down to play in this. And that's how it was built. It's been a big thing this year, which is going to be one of our biggest. Champions is actually a, a way of life for its members. It's like a second home. We hang out, spend time together, and of course, we, uh, we play a lot of golf and a lot of competitive golf. It's just a great group of people here who enjoy the game and enjoy each other. Our camaraderie is unbelievable. Everybody's friends here. The first club was a church. That's why the ceilings at Champions are higher, because churches have high ceilings. To this day, I'm just glad we did that. I've got a saying about the locker room, it's kind of like third base. You got to touch it before you go home. I love it in there. Uh, I have met and made some of my closest and dearest friends since I've been a member here. Uh, I mean, the people that you can count on when you know times are good or bad. We look out after each other. It's family. It's just an unbelievable place. And I think it all starts with Mr. Burke. Delighted that today we recognize uh, for lifetime achievement Jack Burke Jr. I think he runs the club 
But like, like the game of golf, he follows the rules. There's no gray er areas with him. It's either inbounds or out of bounds. The philosophy of champions can be described in two words, honesty and integrity. I don't know anybody that loves this game more than Jack does. To come to champions every day for 60 years, seven days a week, and give it everything that you have speaks volumes to the kind of person that he is. When uh, Jackie interviewed us to be a member, it, uh, you're a little intimidated because the man is just such an awesome individual. There wasn't anything vague about what he was looking for. He wanted to know whether or not I took the game seriously and would follow the rules. And I had heard stories that he was a little grumpy. He is exactly what he presents himself to be. There are no airs about him at all. And he'll tell you exactly what he thinks and you either like it or you don't. If you make him angry, you're gonna know it because he's gonna get in your face, <laughs> you know, but that's good. I, I, I love that about him. He's strong and determined. Uh, he's a, a leader. We like our dictatorship out here. <laughs> We don't have a bunch of committees and worrying about this, worrying about that. We know who runs it. If you come out to Champions, you'll see Jack on the driving range or on the putting green at lunchtime. And if he's out there and it doesn't matter who it is, he's going to help who's practicing near him. He's always giving advice and always teaching. He's a teacher at heart. I think I was about 21 years old. At that point, I was probably not playing my, my best golf, and I was on the range, and he came walking up, and he said, come on, Piercy, uh, let me see you hit a few. So I stood out there, and I hit about four or five balls, and he kind of paused for a second. I turned around and looked at him. He said, Piercy, I think you should go to law school. Those that know him well know that he will provide you a little bit of advice on occasion. If you talk to Jackie for more than probably five minutes, you're going to hear him talk about you know, what he just believes uh, about the game and how the game should be respected and how it should be played. Most games, you've got about five referees because these guys are pulling one another's hair out there. You don't do that in golf. You play by a set of rules and you rule against yourself. Nobody has to tell you that you broke a rule. You know damn well you broke one. I'm going to tell you, he's just a wonderful, wonderful man. His friendship is one of the greatest things, you know, that I've been blessed with in my life. I cherish the fact that I've gotten to know him over the last 20 years. What I think about Jack Burke is hard for me to say it without getting emotional. He is, he is a dear friend and someone that I look up to tremendously. I've never known never known anybody like Jack Burke. Mr. Burke talks about it all the time, is that the future of golf is in youth. Jackie Burke and Robin promote youth golf so much, and they teach these kids so young uh, to be golfers and enjoy the game and, and about the rules. How many rules are there? That girl. <laughs> I mean, little girls. I mean, you've got to be kidding how far that little girl can hit a golf ball. <laughs> and. Once she gets started, she can't wait to play. I like to watch them walking over to the first tee, packing their own bag. That's a sight for me, to see that little girl out there playing, learning rules, and she'll teach that to her own kids. And so I won't want to promote that the rest of my life. And it's so fun to watch these kids grow up and, and see them when they're little, and, and all of a sudden they're playing high school golf or college golf, and how good they are. The young people we're taking in, they want out here because this is where the players are. The Houston Golf Association really has been responsible for a lot of this young play in this community. The first tier of Greater Houston uh, is the Houston Golf Association's chapter uh, that we established in 2004. Uh, we're now the largest chapter in the country. And it's really a grassroots effort to introduce young people to the game of golf. 
and as importantly or maybe more importantly introducing them to certain life skills and principles around the game. 300,000 kids have signed up for that. Well that's the next group of golfers in this whole community. It's what the Berks are doing to promote youth golf that is going to continue Champions Golf Club for another 50 years or 60 years. Champions has endured. It's been very important to, to Houston, and I, I think uh, that's one of the reasons we're all uh, as proud of it as we are. You drive around a 15, 20 mile radius of this golf club, and everything is named Champions. You really earn prestige, and I feel like Champions has earned that prestige and now 60 years of existence. I would say the next 60 years, uh, I'd like to see Champions kind of stay on the same track that it's on now. You know, I would just like to continue to see a, a strong golfing membership that respects the, the game. I can't think of one thing that needs to be changed or improved. You can't fix perfection. I mean, why would you change it? It's a great club. It's about better players. It's about one game. I wouldn't want to change that. I've had a lot of birthdays, and my time here will end. She knows what direction the, the club should go in. It's important to continue to bring events here and continue to keep this club a player's golf course and uh, to bring the better players here, whatever it takes to do that. We are gonna host the Women's Open in 2020. Uh, I know we're gonna try everything we can, all of us together, to continue to bring important events here and to continue the history and the tradition of this club. I think we've become a, a beacon in this community. I do not think about champions as something that I've invented or I don't believe that what I've done can't be redone. And it's gonna be up to the members as to where they go. And I think they'll find their way. When I walk around champions, I'm very proud of what Jack has created here. We've had national tournaments here. We've had great players walk the grounds and battle it out for the title, and that's what makes a club special. It's not just any club, it's a piece of history. It's uh, prestige will do nothing but grow. Champions will always be here because of what it is, what Mr. Bark has created, it is golf and nothing else. <laughs>